Hey Steve here. Now one of the problems that many Photoshop users have when starting out trying to understand luminosity masking is simply wrapping their head around the idea of it. So following step-by-step -step tutorials is all great but sometimes when they come to use it on their own it all goes out of the window. So in this video I'm sharing a way of thinking about luminosity masks that should help you truly understand the concept and what exactly is going on when you use them. Now first I need to assume that you're familiar with the idea of layer masking. Um, if you need more on the absolute basics of layers and masking then check out my intro to layers and masking video which is going to pop up in the corner now. Um, but if you are comfortable with the basics of layer masking, the idea of uh, black conceals, white reveals and all that kind of business, then uh, let's continue. And the next thing to understand is the idea about brushing through a selection. So let me just show you um, what that really means uh, using a 2D selection, like a two-dimensional selection. Uh, so I'm just going to use the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to draw a rough square. Now I'm just going to take a black brush on 100% opacity and I'm going to brush all around here and you'll see that this selection when active is going to restrict my brush strokes to within the bounds of that selection. So I can brush over here and nothing's happening. If I brush over this way then you'll see that you know, as soon as I come within that selection that's when the brush is actually having an effect. So you can think of it like a stencil in a way. Uh, you know, so if you if you imagine the brush is a, a can of spray paint and your selection is basically a stencil. Well, let's see if we can create uh, a T. So let's create a selection that looks a bit like a T. And then we take a brush, or in the real world that would be a can of spray paint, and you can brush around it and it's going to brush within the bounds of that stencil to create that T shape. So that is all well and good. The next thing to think about, uh, staying with that stencil analogy, right? So, you know, if you spray paint through a regular stencil, like I just showed you, it's going to either paint or it's not, you know, you're either spraying paint over the gap in the stencil or you're not. Now imagine a lace curtain, which has got a pattern on it. So the pattern, is made up of some thicker parts of lace and some thinner parts. Now if you're going to use that lace curtain as a stencil then different amounts of paint are going to make it through to whatever you're spraying uh, based on how thick the lace is in each area. So some areas are going to be virtually transparent so the paint is going to be applied at nearly 100% strength. Some areas of that lace curtain are going to completely block the paint from coming through uh, because it's too thick. So, you know, and all other areas in between complete blockage and complete uh, transparency are going to be some level of paint between 0% and 100%. So, here's the kicker a luminosity selection can be thought of as a lace curtain stencil, so that when you brush through it, different amounts of paint are going to make it through in different areas depending on the pattern. When it comes to actually luminosity masking and creating a luminosity mask, the, the pattern of the lace curtain is actually created from the image itself based on the brightness of each pixel. So let me run you through what that would actually look like when applying this concept to an image. So here's an image that I've loaded in Photoshop and the way that we're going to create our lace curtain stencil is in the channels panel. So to do what we need to do, we're going to on the keyboard hold command or control and click once on RGB here and then we can see we've we've loaded a selection. Uh, we've actually loaded the selection we want um, but in order to see and to help visualize this we're first going to save it as a new alpha channel. So we're just going to click down here on the Save Selection as Channel icon. I'm going to deselect the selection now, Command or Control D. 
and I'm going to click on the alpha one channel that we were just uh, that we were just looking at or that we just created so here what we have is basically a black and white version of the image where the brightest parts of the image are whiter and the darkest parts are darker or blacker now think back to the lace curtain it actually looks pretty similar right so yeah it's a black and white image with various degrees of gray in between pure black and pure white now what we're actually looking at here the only difference in this analogy between this and this is that the colors are actually inverted on the lace curtains so let's just invert them now command control i and now what we've got is a stencil where you know the thickest parts of the lace curtain are black the thinnest parts are white and everything in between is a various degree of gray that's going to allow a certain amount of paint through that is between zero and a hundred percent so if we were going to hold this lace curtain up against the wall and spray paint up against it using it as a stencil then the paint is going to show more on the wall in the areas where this is brightest and it's going to be basically completely stenciled out there's going to be zero paint where the uh, where the pattern is the thickest so over here it's exactly the same idea so if you imagine this now as your lace curtain and then you're going to start brushing through it as if it's a stencil with your spray paint can then the areas where it's brightest the paint is going to come through more and the areas where it's darkest is going to come through less now here's how you actually use this to your advantage in photoshop so to actually demonstrate this i'm just going to create a new uh, a new um, white layer and i'm going to select a a green brush so now let's come over into the channels panel and load our alpha one channel as our stencil our luminosity selection so uh, command or control on the keyboard and then click alpha one now come back over into the layers panel click on our white layer and now i've got the brush on 100 percent opacity and i'm going to start brushing through this stencil and we'll see what happens so where where the stencil was thinnest where it was whitest this green brush is actually being applied more strongly and down here where it's less uh, you know where it's darker the brush is being applied much you know, at much lower strength so you know this is the stencil we're brushing through that stencil and another term for this is a luminosity selection now let me just deselect so we can see what we've got here so we've basically you know we've brushed through that lace curtain stencil with a green paintbrush and this is the result so it's it's blocked the paint from those areas that were darkest in the stencil so the final dot to connect is uh, how to actually use this to turn it into a luminosity mask so let me just get rid of that um, and let's add a curves adjustment that is going to darken the image right now we are going to invert the mask to completely hide its effect command or control i so back over into the channels panel i'm going to load our alpha one selection or alpha one channel as a selection our luminosity selection or our stencil command or control click now remember everywhere that is brightest in this view in this preview the brush is going to be applied more strongly so when we come back over into the layers panel click on the layer mask now with a white brush because we want to reveal this effect in the brightest areas of the image we're going to brush up here and we'll see that the selection is allowing that because that's uh, you know that's the thinnest part of the lace curtain um, and 
it allows me, you know, I can brush over here as much as I like and nothing is happening because the stencil has kind of blocked it. Uh, you know, it's blocked the brush. So let's have a look at what that's done in the layer mask. Alt or option and click in the mask. So let's now deselect this selection so we can see what we're looking at. And here we go. This is our layer mask that we've brushed through the uh, luminosity selection to achieve. Now, because we've done that in a layer mask, we have now created a luminosity mask. So this explanation actually took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to, to explain. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. So if none of the, if something here doesn't make any sense, or if you just need something clarified, do ask me a question. I do reply to comments here on YouTube. Or if this has helped you uh, finally get your head around the idea of luminosity masking, then please also do let me know, even, you know, just give me a yes in the comments. And, you know, I'd love to hear if this video helps you. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, there's an icon on the screen right now that you can click to subscribe. And once you've done that, you can click the next video link to, uh, to check out some more luminosity masking.